Hi everyone, I'm Chris Trunser from the Veil vale of Asian Project and we're going to go over a tutorial today on how to use the PowerShell Download Virtual payload. The way that this payload works is it's going to execute a PowerShell command on your victim's machine which tells it to connect back to you, the attacker, or another server that you control that's hosting your shellcode. It will then download that shellcode from wherever you point it to and then execute that in memory back on the victim machine. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. To do this, we're going to list the different payloads that Veil has in Use 11. And in this case, we're going to set the download host to our IP. So let's find that out real quick. Copy that out. And paste that in here. Oops. Check, make sure it's set, and it was generate. Now, so that's just telling us where to connect back to and download our shellcode. Our shellcode we're going to go ahead and generate now. So we're going to use MSF Venom versus TCP, connect back to 8675, and generate. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to stand up a web server on this machine so that the PowerShell on the victim machine process can connect back to us and download the code. So we'll do p shell connect back, we'll just call it. All right, so if we look, it puts the source code to this out and veil output source. So right now, this is going to be our shell code, base64 encoded. If we look, this contains the command that we need to run. However, it's not in a resource file, so we're going to have to set this up manually. To do that, go ahead and load up Minusplay console. While that's going, we know we're going to need to serve up this file. So let's stand up a quick HTTP server right in here. So we'll use Python's simple HTTP server and tell it to serve it up over port 80. Oops. There we go. And so one way we can do this is we're going to first set up our handler for the shellcode. So let's explain that time handler. And so reverse TCP. Let's give it our IP address. Give it the port that we told it to come back to. We're going to tell it to exit on slash when false. And everything looks right, so let's execute it as a job. Alright, so that's in the background. In order to trigger this, we're going to need to execute a command on the victim machine. And we'll just use Metasploit's built in psexec command. So to do that, we'll do use auxiliary admin smb psexec command. See our options. So in this case, we're obviously going to have to know. Um, creds or, or the clear text password or the hash and so we're going to go ahead and set that SMB user is tester set SMB pass is password set our host and so in this case we're only giving it once uh, so we don't need to have, give it multiple IPs so it's just this so 16.88.141 yep and we're, the command we're going to use, we already know that this is a 64-bit operating system, so we're going to give it use the 64-bit version of PowerShell, and we're going to copy this. Obviously, if it was a 32-bit uh, machine, we would copy this command. So we're going to set command this. Now the only thing to note is that this is not properly escaping the backslashes, which Metasploit requires when we're when you're providing that. So we are going to do that right now. And there we go. So now what should happen is basically once I hit exploit, this will connect to our target machine, run the PowerShell command. We should see on here that the our file is being accessed, the CPB file, and that is the victim machine downloading that code. It'll then run that shell code on our victim machine, and we should see a session open up. So let's give it a shot. 
All right, so it executed. Might take a couple seconds. But there we go, we can see it connected in. Boom, session opened up. And we go interact with that, get UID, and our system. And so that's how that PowerShell Connect Back payload works. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask or hop in our forums. Thanks. Have a good one.